Stress primarily comes from not taking action. But he was redefining failure for me. Don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're gonna make tons of mistakes. You talk about progress that it'll uh, reduce people's commitment to make things better. I think stress, you can be, uh, I think one of the things that's very important to note about stress is that stress primarily comes from not taking action over something that you can have some control over. So if I find that some particular thing is causing me to have stress, that's a, uh, a, a warning flag for me. What it means is there's something that I haven't completely identified perhaps in my conscious mind that is bothering me and I haven't yet taken any action on it. I find as soon as I identify it and make the first phone call or send off the first email message or whatever it is that we're gonna do to start to address that situation, even if it's not solved, the mere fact that we're addressing it dramatically reduces any stress that might come from it. So stress comes from ignoring things that you shouldn't be ignoring. Um, I think in large part. So uh, stress doesn't come, people get stress uh, uh, wrong all the time in my opinion. Stress doesn't come from hard work, for example. You know, you can be working incredibly hard and loving it. And likewise, you can be out of work and incredibly stressed over that. So, and likewise, if you kind of use the, you know, use that as an analogy for what I was just talking about, if you're out of work, but you're going through, you know, a disciplined uh, approach of you know a series of job interviews and so on and working to remedy that situation you're going to be a lot less stressed than if you're just worrying about it and doing nothing well growing up my dad used to encourage my brother and me to fail so at the dinner table he would actually ask us what did you fail at this week and if we didn't have something to tell him, he would actually be disappointed. And I can remember coming home from school and being like, Dad, Dad, I tried out for this and I was horrible. And he'd be like, way to go and high five me. <laughs> and what, it was such a gift what he was doing. I didn't realize it at the time, but he was redefining failure for me. And so failure became not about the outcome, but about not trying. And so, you know, the fear of failure, as we all know as entrepreneurs, is one of the greatest fears in life. It's one of the things that stops us in our tracks and keeps us from trying something. Um, and so I, you know, I incorporate that in my philosophy at Spanx. We have, we celebrate failures, we talk about them, we have oops meetings where I'll announce the oops that I have and sometimes we have fun with it. We'll even attach theme songs to our oops <laughs> and we'll play them in front of the whole company but I think it's just so important to, to try to get the people that you work with to take risks and to be entrepreneurial and not live in a place of I want to protect my job and feel like I'm not safe if I make mistakes. You know it's um, so many things go wrong when you're starting a company and often I think people ask you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running. Can you have it all? That's the big question in this definition. I think if you have the right support system, if you have an understanding spouse, if you want to be married, uh, and if you're willing to make all the trade-offs that you need to make, you can have it all. But while you do all that, there will be heartache, there will be pain, there will be some collateral damage underneath the surface. You've got to live with it. I think, I, I think you know, it's sort of foolish to spend your life not for, not, not, becoming expert at your passions. If you're passionate about something, you're going to give it 
um, you're going to give it your all and, um, and you're going to en en enjoy learning about it. Whereas if you have no interest in it, um, uh, you're, you're not going uh, to lap it up. First of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. So speaking so, of important things. Like people shouldn't think, oh, I, 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 I should, people shouldn't think, well, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to, be, to feel fear. Like you'd have to, there'd have to be something mentally wrong <laughs> if you didn't feel fear. Um, so you just feel it and let the importance of it drive you to do it anyway? Yeah, I, you know, I, actually something that can be helpful is fatalism, uh, to some degree. Um, if, you just, if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. We think uh, that progress can actually accelerate. The last, 50, last 15 years have been wonderful, but the next 15, uh, we can do more. Uh, and some people worry that when you, you talk about progress that it'll uh, reduce people's commitment to make things better. Uh, they think when you talk about progress that it shows you're naive and that maybe you don't realize uh, all those things that are left to be done and how horrific they are. Uh, and you know, so sometimes that purely that negative side of the story gets told, but you lose something very important uh, if you only look at it that way. Uh, you lose the optimism about what's possible and you lose the information where you look at the places that have done better than others and you understand what is it about delivery, innovation, partnerships, caring, what has come together uh, for the very best progress and then spread that uh, to the other places. Uh, that's what will help us drive at full speed.